Ramadan is marked by the observance of fasting from just before sunrise until just after sunset. For the billions of Muslims around the world, this is a time of family, faith and charity. Assalamu alaikum, you're watching this week's Annur The Light. In recent years, Ramadan markets offer a variety of products for Muslims. We visited one in Cape Town. The annual Ramadan Expo has become big news all across South Africa and for Capetonians the markets continue to grow, offering more choice to shop before this year's fasting period. The Cape Town Ramadan and Lifestyle Expo flavoured by Cuisine Spices. It started nine years ago when Radio 76 realised that there's a gap in the market. Nothing with regard to a Ramadan Expo was in the Western Cape. And that is when Radio 76 decided on a very, very small scale to do that. When we speak about Ramadan, we're speaking about the Ramadan foods, your dates, your vermicelli, your lakshan, your rose water, your rose syrup, everything under one roof is what you can now find at the Cape Town Ramadan and Lifestyle Expo. Because it is one experience under one roof where you can shop for Ramadan as well as for Eid. Cape Town's International Convention Centre played host to this year's expo. People came in their droves and with a variety of products on offer, stall holders looked like they were quite successful. When visitors enter the expo, they will see everything when, when it comes to Ramadan buying. For example, your dates, your vermicelli, your rose syrup, as well as your crockery everything that you need for your buka table. You can also get all your salad tops, your scarves, your jewelry, your perfume, your makeup, menswear. Also for men who look after the beard, for example, everything that you need within the house you can find. So you can look at curtaining. There was also the jewelry aspect that was a very, very big draw card to this expo. And the furniture, that is something that when people walked in there, they were very surprised to see furniture and cushions all over the place. An interactive cooking theatre brought some of social media's most well-known food bloggers to share tips and recipes for this year's Ramadan meals. The interactive cooking theatre is primarily about cooking. Um, and what we've done is brought recipes interestingly to the audience and using uh, celebrities, which has added an extra spark and dynamic to, to cooking generally and especially for the Ramadan recipes. Lots of fun and some new recipes and also some cost-effective recipes. Uh, things that you can warm up very easily and quickly and economically for a small or big family. So we have diverse um, dishes that will be presented here. Things from the very easy pasta alfredo that everybody knows to make up to five-star dishes um, by five-star chefs as well as a touch of sushi. The expo truly catered to old and young and the junior cook-off proved to be both fun and exciting. We have a special segment for children because um, they too enjoy getting involved and getting involved with making iftar dishes. So we've got cake decorations, cupcake decorations, we've got boulder burger uh, for various ages. People are enjoying it and I think the moms are enjoying the children's cooking specifically because it gives them something to do and gives them purpose. Um, over the holidays and of course during uh, Ramadan preparations. I have a history of cooking, I have a history of a lot of things, but um, I have a history with cooking. I've been, um, I do it with passion, it's something that I thoroughly enjoy doing and, uh, and that's why I'm here to share and enjoy this, um, the festivities. For those who wanted to learn more about Islam and its practices in the Cape, the Burhanul Center's living history concept proved to be very popular. At this expo, you are able to look at from the cradle to the grave, what happens when a Muslim child is born, when the name is given, what happens when a child goes to madrasa, to school, when a child is asked, for example, when they grow older, to get married, what la barang is about, what fasting is about, the sighting of the moon, going for hajj, fasting during the month of Ramadan and also when we die there is a whole janaza process. So from the cradle to the grave teaches you about the traditions of the Cape Muslims. So when you come to the Cape Town Ramadan and Lifestyle Expo, it is not just about Ramadan, it is about the culture of the Cape Muslim as well. So we're looking at wedding expos, we are looking at Islamic art, we are looking at the spa interactive cooking theater and that is all encompassing. So it is from the eating habits, the dress habits, 
the cultural habits of the Cape Muslims. So it is predominantly for Muslims, but it invited a wider audience because we also looked at Arabis Afrikaans and that also generated a lot of interest. When people come and walk into the expo, they will get a feel of Ramadan, but more so also the Cape culture, because that is what we want to do. We're inviting the broader community, not to find out what Islam is not about, but to find out what Islam truly is. This year's market and expo has set the bar with innovative displays and well thought of exhibitors and products. Its one-stop shop concept is catching on and this only bodes well for an understanding of Muslims and Islam in South Africa. Our phones have become an essential part of life, but this should not deter us from indulging in the pleasure of reading a book or exploring. This week's books, tech and app segment shows us some cool things to do with the phone as well as books to read. Sheikh Hairi's spectrum of reality. Sufi Insights explores faith in a practical sense by discussing the mysteries of spirituality and the need to find a higher level of consciousness. It goes beyond religious and political differences and draws on the commonality of our spirituality, our reality and the divine. In a world of violence and conflict, this book aims to promote a celebration of our humanity and our longing for peace and intervention. Consciousness of time, continuity and living in the present are discussed in this great read and truly can only add to one's spiritual journey. Techfugees is exactly as its name states, technology for the benefit of refugees. It is a social enterprise started by Mike Butcher in which the tech community came together to respond to the growing refugee crisis. Techfugees has come together at conferences, workshops, hackathons and meetups to generate solutions to help refugees around the world. Islamic Kid Songs for Android truly is revolutionary in that it brings many well-known Nasheeds together with animated characters allowing your little one to become familiar with these in a fun and exciting way. Keep your children productive and tech savvy but in a way in which contributes to their deen. It's time to go to the masjid, wash your face up, let's go to the masjid, it's time to go to the masjid. Children can spend hours singing along with Nasheeds from around the world. The Manara Chamber of Commerce is dedicated to creating awareness, especially for Muslim business. We attended one of the events in Durban to see what they're up to. The Manara Chamber of Commerce started out as an initiative to unite Muslim businesses in KwaZulu-Natal and has since grown to other regions within South Africa. Their membership consists of entrepreneurs, professionals and businesses who have all come to depend on the Chamber for information on how best to do business in this country. Minara Chamber of Commerce is a formal business organization whose aim and goal is centered around five objectives, five key objectives. One is to strengthen existing businesses and create new opportunities for them. The second is to create opportunities for women-owned enterprises. The third is on harnessing the potential of young entrepreneurs, and that is why we are gathered here this evening. The fourth is to disseminate uh, information and education through seminars on business practices, best business practices, and that incorporates part of what we are doing here this evening as well. We see a great deal of potential and a great future for young entrepreneurs in our country. If we look at what's happening in the economy, not just globally, but peculiarly in South Africa, that you have large businesses that are downscaling. And if you remember in the State of the Nation address, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa spoke about the contribution of small businesses as an engine to growth. And we think that young businesses would be the catalyst to that growth, and we need to support them. As part of keeping members informed, the Chamber offers a monthly coffee session for young entrepreneurs. This month's session is all about tax compliance and an expert in the field shares his knowledge with the crowd. I've been asked to talk about compliance in terms of South African Revenue Services as well as other compliances that are pertaining to a company or an organisation. 
The entire focus from government has now zoned in on compliance in all aspects of businesses, whether it's from a Department of Labor point of view or a South African Revenue Services collections or compliance point of view. So we're just basically creating awareness to the public and to the businessmen out there of their compliance reporting duties on a day-to-day -day basis. With modern technology, the South African Revenue Services as well as the Department of Labor have uh, methods of tracking these non-compliances and they have more enforcement driven uh, people on the ground to drive the enforcement nowadays. These events attract many aspiring as well as established businesses and even Itekweni Deputy Mayor Fozi Apia makes a point of attending. Minara, I've been a board member for the last, I would say, seven years and they pulled me in because of uh, having a representative from government. And from time to time, you have these service delivery uh, matters. And it frustrates, uh, uh, you know, business people. And you want investors to come to the city. You want, we want our business people to be happy. Plans are not passed on time. They get frustrated. And I think by me being there, we have a little section of service delivery whereby business people come directly to my office through Minara. Zuleika Khan was one of the entrepreneurs who've benefited greatly from being part of the chamber and attending similar events. Being part of the training competition, it, it actually enabled me with the skills to more effectively and efficiently run my business. There were skills that I didn't know much about. Um, there were things that I didn't know with regards to my place in the value chain, how to take advantage of the opportunity, uh, basically how to seize the moment and capture what you do and make a market, create a market for it. And by being on the program, they've equipped me with the skill and I think this has actually set me apart from the rest. Winning the competition has taken our business to a different level. We re-strategized the branding of the company. Uh, we've created a market now for dialysis. I think to an extent that if somebody, uh, what I'm trying to create is if somebody thinks of renal um, dialysis or renal failure, the first thing that pops up into their head is Farallum Dialysis Center or Zuleika Khan. And I, I think we've been doing that quite efficiently for the last few months now. I think that there is a driving need that we as South Africans need to pull together. So we cannot just say it's government's job to create a change. It's up to us as individuals as well to create that change. And I am guided by a principle of the Holy Quran which says, let there be trade amongst you for mutual benefit. So it's the benefit of all. And if we can encourage people to start looking at trade and at, at business uh, for mutual benefit, then we are making a positive change to our country. The work of the Minara Chamber of Commerce speaks for itself and after 18 years they are contributing positively to this country. As they continue to grow and expand, more and more people will be affected by their work. With a constitution that is based on an Islamic code of conduct and ethics contained in the Holy Quran, who can deny them their success? It may be Ramadan and many families are staying home, but it doesn't mean life comes to a standstill. Grab a pen and a piece of paper to find out what you can get up to with this month's events calendar. South African television and film continues to grow and this year is no exception. The 20th South African Encounters Documentary Festival takes place until the 10th of June and will see the best in local and international documentaries being screened. Happening at the VNA Nouveau, the Labia Theatre and Bertha Movie House in Cape Town, as well as Rosebank Nouveau and the Bioscope in Johannesburg, the 11-day festival certainly features something for every cinematic taste. The Imam Suyuti Institute proudly presents a brand new course, Parenting in Islam. Happening at the Taranga Road Masjid Hall until the 25th of June, the nine-week course will cover everything from ethical, spiritual and faith education, all according to Islam. If you have or are expecting to have children, be sure to join this course and become the best parent you can be. For more information, email info at imamsuyuti.co.za. Do you want your child to explore the creative side? Well, acting, physical theatre and creative writing are all on the bill at this year's Performing Hearts Theatre Workshops. 
happening during the month of June at the Rudderport Theatre, children will not only be able to have fun, but also gain quality arts training. For more information or to enroll, email azwi at rudderporttheatre.com. Warm up this winter at the Hartley Fair, an awesome three-day event from the 29th of June to the 1st of July. With an exciting bouquet of stalls featuring exotic and unusual gifts, designer clothing and shoes, home decor, tantalizing food and non-stop family entertainment. The Hartley Fair will warm your heart this winter. Tswane is the capital of South Africa, but there's a lot more to it, as we find out in this week's travel segment. The Clay Club is one of those places where time flies as one gets down to the nitty-gritty of creating exceptional works of art for pleasure. With a variety of styles, colours and objects, people can get carried away if they don't watch themselves. The Clay Club is a, a, a small business that I own and over here we encourage people to come and be creative. They can come and do a mosaic kit um, where we've made the little inserts for them to come and create something with. And then we also do some bisque painting where a person takes a bisque item and um, they actually paint on it. We then glaze and fire it for them and then that gets put into our special oven and then they can take it home and utilize it in whatever way they see fit. I started um, very many years ago when I fell pregnant with my first little child and I needed to find a form of work to do. And um, I started taught, teaching little children pottery lessons. And um, about 10 years ago, a friend of mine asked me to make her a little flower to put in her mosaic. And that's how the business actually expanded for me to actually then make the little ceramic inserts for people. What started out as a hobby of owner, Ursula, has grown into a thriving business that attracts people from all walks of life. There are endless combinations that people can try out and the only obstacle is one's imagination. The items that you can make here, we've got different shaped woods that, that we offer for the mosaics and they then create anything on there. They choose little tiles, they choose little flowers, hearts, that type of thing and then they actually create it. Uh, we make trays, we make, um, we've got special kits that we've incorporated and anything from the little three-year-old right up to the 90-year-old granny that can come and be creative. So the vision of the Clay Club is to actually help people to become creative, to do things out of the box, to think out of the box and to actually help them find something to do that would actually make them relax and enjoy time away or time spent and it's something that they can take home and that's tangible for them to actually have in their, in, in their hands when they take it home. With so much fun to be had, who would hesitate to book some time and share the experience with friends and family? Twani is all the better for having something so fun and creative on offer. Curry has overtaken many other traditional food in other countries and remains one of the best meals on this planet. It's no mistake then that there are so many places serving it and in South Africa with a big Indian population, the curry varies but never fails. I have a passion for cooking and so we, I love cooking for the family. So one day my husband asked me, would you cook for a, you know, if we open up a restaurant? I said, yeah, why not? So it was, that's how we started. Basically, we do it home cooking. So the passion for cooking, we do it for, you know, out of love. So that is why people basically come back. Most popular is the bunny chow. Then you get curry and rice and roti rolls. Uh, well, basically everything is popular because as the people get to know what, they start from the menu and that's where they decide what they like. Life is too short to be too far away from a good curry, and luckily for South Africans, this may never be the case. With so many great curry dens, we are bound to live a good life. After eating up a storm, there can be few better places in Pretoria to walk off the food than the National Botanical Gardens. We use the Botanical Garden as a classroom to facilitate um, biodiversity education programs for learners right from grade R to grade 12, students and the general public. Um, so this is to make sure that they know more about biodiversity and they use the information we give them to empower them um, to make decisions 
about the environment and biodiversity. We have an education center where we welcome them into the education center, introduce the Pretoria National Botanical Garden, the indigenous biodiversity, because all our gardens have indigenous plants. And then of course, depending on the different topic that they do uh, or they've booked to do on that day, we then take them through the garden. We don't really do a garden walk, but we do a themed based uh, program. So if we're teaching them about grasslands, we'll take them into the grasslands. They'll know the different types of grasses. What do we find in grasslands? What are the benefits? If we're doing something like uh, biomes, we'll take them through the garden and show them the different vegetations um, and how do we benefit from them. We easily can even do programs on medicinal plants or traditional use of plants. We even go further into ecosystems where we would take the learners um, to our man-made wetland in the garden and we teach the learners about what our wetlands about. So different topics that has to do with the different um, aspects of biodiversity and the environment. The gardens offers visitors a unique experience in an urban oasis. 50% of other country's tree species can also be found here with numerous species of plants and flowers. What makes it so special is mainly the diversity of plants that we have in the garden. Uh, for example, we, we, we have also uh, plants like cycads, which are more threatened plant species. At the back of the garden, we have the, the, the more of a forest type of, of, of a garden, which is also natural. We have quite a number of, of, of theme gardens, for example. We have a medicinal garden where we plant mainly medicinal plants that are used for plants that are used for medicinal purposes. We have the waterwise garden, and the main aim of that garden is to teach us about how we can save water, like how we can do gardening in a way that we have to also save water, or take the scarcity of water into consideration. They can also do things like picnicking. They can come with their partners or your lover, you have a picnic in the garden. They can also come and sometimes they book on weekends and then they, they, they do weddings in the garden, like they have a, a garden wedding. There's also a waterfall down there uh, next to Mill Plump where they can come and take pictures, for example. We also have a prior area, by the way, that we have down there, the garden. Like, you can come to, to, to the prior area with your, with your people or with your friends. You can pry, you can enjoy, you can do whatever. This is truly one of the best places to visit when in the capital city and offers visitors hours of exploration and getting to know the different flora as well as the biomes that make up South Africa. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we've come to the end of another episode, but we'll be back same time, same place next week. Shukran for tuning in. Assalamu alaikum from me, Sahra Robinson. <laughs>